have. I'm gonna use that one. Okay. So this is Pastel. We've been taking care of her for about three years. Her owners actually live down in uh, Southern Alberta, right down by the border. But the reason we've been taking care of her is because her knees have a little bit of issues here. She's getting arthritis, as you can kind of see down here. The membrane's kind of blown and she's got the bubbles here on both of her knees. And this is the gray, her pasture buddy. This is a wedding present. He's been a good horse. One that we'd actually, uh, you can even take little kids on and such. But as you'll see here, when Pastel moves, uh, she's gonna limp around just a little bit. And it's just because the arthritis in her knee there is so bad. and she was bred down on the SDP ranch down in Texas there. And uh, her sire and all that kind of thing. She's a granddaughter of smart little Lena. And her sire won, I believe it's right around $500,000 in the show pen doing cutting and working cow horse and that kind of stuff. Very talented, very talented horse. Anyway, so her owner starred her, got her uh, working, doing ranch work, all that kind of good stuff. The horse is an amazing horse. I even got the chance to ride this mare and do ranch with, work with her when she was younger. Really great minded horse uh, she's pretty stiff in those front knees seven years ago she actually started developing that issue in her front knees and it made it so that we couldn't even ride her anymore and so then a couple years after that we decided we were going to uh, get her bred because we didn't know how long that she was going to be functional for and with all that good bloodlines and stuff we just wanted to make sure that we got a couple foals out of her, but during the, the pregnancy, we really noticed that uh, her, her feet really started doing not so well. And uh, her knees, I guess you could say, started not doing so well. We had the foal, he was a really, a really nice gray, just like a sire. The sire was a, a cutting bread horse. And, uh, hey, hey, hey. I'll have to give it back to her in a second here. Cutting bread horse, and so this colt was turning out just like his sire. Gonna be a gray. And the gray, he uh, turned out to be a really good looking colt. But at about eight months old, he started developing bone spurs in between a short and long pastern bone. So if you look here on a horse, this is the pastern part here. Ah, uh, hey, bo hey pony. Right in between your cannon bone and then the internal structures and the hoof wall and all that kind of stuff. So you got your pastern bone. There's a short one and a long one, and there's a joint. And right in between that joint, he started developing bone spurs. And so it made him like limping. It's a genetic disorder. And we were talking to different vets, had them all looked up, x-rayed the whole nine yards. We looked into it and it was gonna make him so he couldn't move around at all. Like it was bad. And one of the options was that we could get the bones fused together. It was an alcohol infusion and it would make them unusable for any show pen work. So it's kind of out of the picture for me to continue taking them on and training and stuff. And so at that point we decided to find a buyer for them. Found a lady that was interested in taking them through the whole process of the operation. And now he's out there kicking his heels up as a normal horse, but he just can't do the high performance stuff. He can still be ridden, be good pasture buddy and all that kind of stuff, but he's just not a high performance horse. So Pastel basically got to the point where uh, we were like, okay, we might have to put her down because she's just getting too painful. So what we did is Abby and I decided, okay, we'll give this horse another go and uh, take care of her feet and give her supplements and whatever else to try to get her back on the road after having the last full. And that's what we've had her here for the last three years for is just to try to get her back in shape. And last year she was finally in good enough shape, walking around decent, actually better than what she is now. 
and we're like, okay, we're gonna find a good reigning stud, one that kind of counteracts some of her characteristics because she's really wide on the chest, and one find one that's a bit narrower, a bit finer built, and so that hopefully the full, the coming full, can be a really athletic horse. She's super athletic. We found an athletic reigning horse, and we're excited to see what's happening here because she's pregnant, obviously, and the full should be coming in another month or so. It's kind of the joys and sorrows of owning horses. You go from them being a great prospect uh, to being ones that are unusable, but there's always a use for them if you got to take the time or have the time to take work with them. This will definitely be this mare's last full as every time she has a full uh, her feet get a lot worse her whole body just gets goes downhill and so this is definitely the last one but if you've never done horse feet before it's actually a little harder than what it's, it looks. I have uh, my sister-in-law working with me for a week and a bit and start teaching her how to wrap feet and stuff and she's like wow there's a lot that goes into that you make it look real easy but that comes with a lot of years like this is what I do for full-time jobs so it's not like I just started yesterday on making horses feet look pretty it's been a while coming Yep, putting them on greener pastures. Use nutrients for them. There we go. There we go, freedom. It's about 40 acre pasture. You can have lots of fun out there. Hey there, big boy. Now you're free. 